Yo, what is going on guys? Horcrux here and welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you enjoyed watching the clips at the beginning of the video as much as I enjoyed making them. The Harmony builds on the Necro is by far the most fun 1VX class in ESO. I'm not gonna lie, I've had an absolute blast. So this is an updated version of my 1VX Harmony Magicka Necromancer PvP build. So I went and tweaked it. I min-maxed it as much as possible. And guess what guys? You get a two for today. Not only do you get a solo build, but you're also going to get a group play build as well that's what i'm going to start doing going forward with my build videos i know that my solo play style is probably 10 percent of what you guys are actually looking for and the other 90 percent are kind of based around group play or small groups or zergs or whatever so i gonna be bringing you two renditions of the same build and how you would run this in a different scenario so patrons youtube members thank you guys so much for supporting me and the channel i honestly would not be here without you all so without further ado fellas let's hop into the 1vx build here so here's our character sheet completely unbuffed we are running the breton this gives us cost reduction on all of our spells it's probably my favorite race to run in eso currently we're running the shadow mundus because this is a crit harmony build even though our character sheet doesn't show a lot of crit i'll show you how we increase that we're running the bewitch sugar skulls for the food now our crit does go up pretty high with our crit potions pop so it says only 28.4 percent but the necro has passes with when you get when the enemy gets a little health or whatever your crit actually goes up really really high so this actually caps up around like 40 percent something like that so you actually do crit quite often our spell damage completely buffed is around 4500 this goes up to 5k when continuous attack this is a harmony build go ahead and let you guys know ahead of time our resistances on the back bar is as follows 30k spell 24k physical with 2k crit resist now let's hop into the sets fellas so first set we're running is lightning staff dark convergence the only reason we're really running this so it gives you max magica offensive penetration spell and weapon damage which is also so good and so casting any ground abilities will pull everyone together and you guys know on the necromancer harmony is your bread and butter that's how you're going to burst people so the more people you can have in your little aoe harmony proc the better so that's essentially all this set does it's not here to give us damage even though it can give us damage when it hits like 10 or 15 people this is just simply to pull people to one area just so you can get the most bang for your buck with your harmony proc so trait wise uh, we are running sharpened um, this gives you the most damage overall with a shock damage glyph on the jewelry we are running iron blood for the back bar set we'll go ahead and go over the, the restoration staff so the restoration staff is iron blood i know you guys hate iron blood but don't worry we're taking this set off for the group build um this is essentially a turn and burn build just like my dk you want people to dogpile on you you want people to be congested around you just so when you pop your boneyard you can pull everyone in and they're gone right so iron blood what it allows you to do we'll go and go over the pieces in case you don't know what this is it gives you health armor armor and then the five piece when you take damage you have a 10 percent chance to reduce all incoming damage taken by 30 percent now it does impose a snare on you you don't have to really worry about that you just have to practice roll dodging and bunny hopping right after your roll dodge so when you jump right after your road dodge, you actually carry your momentum and you ignore that snare that it actually implies to you. So the reason this is so good is it gives you time to line up your burst. Now, the Harmony Crow has one of the most wonkiest and buggiest combinations you can ever do. It is really, really annoying when it doesn't land. So there's all kinds of things that can go wrong for example we'll go ahead and go over the very basic burst combination so you will want to apply blast bones very first thing you want to do now since we are running everything on a front bar you want to have all your buffs debuffs up obviously you want to apply blast bones you want to uh, light attack you want to cast your avid boneyard what that's going to do it's going to pull everyone in with dc and then as your blast bones is rushing toward them you want to donnie activate your synergy or if you on your back bar you want to use a pestle and colossus ult what you want to do in the rotation is blast bones light attack pestle and colossus front bar avid boneyard harmony is how you want to set that up now i will have on screen of the pictographs of the orders you want to cast this in whether you want to use pest and colossus or dawn breaker but some things to note with the harmony proc so you notice well after the the cooldown resets the 
cooldown on your synergy is 20 seconds. Just FYI, do not try to do your burst combo again before 20 seconds because you will not get the synergy proc. So when you toss this down, look, I can activate Boneyard. Look, look what happens when you try to run into your synergy. It's gone. You can't use it. You have to recast it. So if you run into your synergy, it will not work. For example, I'll cast out here. I sprint into it. You will not get the synergy as a bug. It's very game breaking. This is, in my opinion, worse than the elite bug. So Zoss, please fix your game, homies. Come on. Um, also, to note, if you get CC'd as you're dropping your Boneyard, you also not get the proc. You need to lay Boneyard down again in order to get it. And be really wary when you're roll dodging into this as well. While roll dodging will not interfere with the bug, right? You can still roll dodge into this as long as you do not sprint. Oh, maybe you can't. So you have to be really careful with your roll dodges as well. You have to just, yeah, see, you don't get the proc. What I'm trying to say is, immovable pots are really good on this. Just be really careful when your burst combination comes up. So we'll finish going over the set. Iron Blood again on the back bar. For our monster sets, we're running the Battle Orgs. Um, this gives us, the, your, your ult is everything, guys. So when you use your ult, you have to kill people. Like This is the only chance you're really going to have to consistently kill people and, ba and battle orgs give you the most bang for your buck in this regard. So whenever you activate your ultimate, you get weapon damage as spell weapon damage as well as spell penetration. So the more ult you have, the more damage you're going to do. Now when it comes to the traits, um, I'm rocking on the big pieces, you want tri stats and on the smaller pieces, I'm rocking in pin. You could also rock well fitted if you like the roly poly oly play style, which I do. And then on your jeweler, you want everything harmony with our mythic item being marking ring of majesty. So this will tank us up a bit. Um, I would not suggest running um, uh, Malakanth for this because this is more or less a crit build. And then we have one piece training. Um, other sets you could possibly run. Uh, you, you can run like snow treaders possibly if you really want the snare removal. Um, it does offset iron blood quite a bit because no other snares can be applied to you. Um, you can run death dealer's faith as well. I just prefer marking ring of majesty because it also gives me a lot of spell damage. Now, when it comes to the champion system, um, the champion points are going to be the same on the second build as well. Running fighting finesse, ironclad, fighting aura, and master at arms over into the red tree here um this is entirely up to you kind of what you want to run now the champion points will change when we go into the second build because you need to tank up a little bit but as of right now we're running the same uh pain's refuge because we're not running a purge on this build we're running sustained by suffering that's going to help with our recovery and limitlessness to give us major protection as well as survival instincts now going over into the skills running Elemental Drain, uh, this more or less is Flex Spot. I love having Elemental Drain um, just to casually toss up to help with your sustain. Socking Blast Bones, please toss this all full down. Every four or five seconds, whatever this is, just toss them out. They do an incredible amount of damage, especially when they crit. Now, these two abilities here, um, since this is a solo build, if you go all in on like the AoE damage, let's say for example, I don't have a single target spammable, a lot of people are going to get away. And it's really annoying, especially when you're rocking Iron Blood. You're not going to be able to chase those players down. So it's very important for you to have a single target spammable. And then the only time I use Pulsar is to inflict people with a Minor Mangle, which reduces their health by 10%. And this is also what I use for my burst combo. I just spam this after the DC combo as well. So I have a Boneyard again is on your front bar. Um, a little bit of misconception. Your Harmony is not going to do more damage if you have a corpse in or out of your Harmony. This only applies to the dot damage. Now we have Dawnbreaker smiting on the front bar. Sometimes you can change up the combo and do a Donnie into a Harmony proc instead of a Harmony proc into a Donnie. It just really depends on your opponents and your situation that you're in. Now back bar. A lot of people run the other Ghost Morph. I know in my previous build video I ran the other Morph, but Intensive Mender is really, really powerful. This is essentially a Rapid Regen heal as well. It's very, very cheap to cost. Since we have an insane amount of damage mitigation, just running the other Ghost really doesn't give us any more mitigation really. I mean, it does. It does think us up a little bit more, but I'd rather have the extra ongoing healing than even more damage mitigation. So. On the Iron Blood build, I would definitely suggest running Intensive Mender. We're Resistant Flesh. Breton, like this is a very, very expensive skill to cast. Try not to cast this at all if you can. Only if you get below like 30% health, you need to be casting this. You should be able to keep yourself capped off with Rapid Regeneration, Intensive Mender, and also Mortal Coral on the back bar, which also buffs our healing. 
over time and as well as giving a stamina back per second and then we have summoner's armor do not run the other armor because it will mess up your combo it's going to pull people in it's going to put them on cc cooldown and you're not going to be able to land your harmony proc reliably anyway and then of course on the back bar we have pest and colossus you want this one because you're not worried about the stun because the dark convergence already stuns them so this just gives us even more damage it implies major vulnerability increasing their damage taken by 10 percent just be sure when you line up your combo that before you activate your harmony you activate your ult first just so you get the increased spell penetration and also spell damage again one more time the combo if you're going to run pestilent colossus blast bones back bar fly attack colossus front bar avid bone yard grave robber okay again i'll have picture graphs somewhere up on the screen because i do go through it pretty fast and you just have to it's a very wonky combo right all right guys so on to the second build this is a group play build so the race is still going to be bright and we're still running the bewitch sugar skulls um here's our character sheet um kind of everything uh, completely uh unbuffed here running the shadow mundus as well because we're still abusing the, the whole crit factor now what's going to change are the sets so on the front bar we're actually slotting vicious death so we're replacing iron blood with vicious death sharpened on this and we're going to be running Dark Convergence on the back bar. The rest of the sets are still going to remain the same. The Battle Orgs with Mark and Ring and Majesty. The only thing that's really going to change is your traits. If you want to go all in on the bombing build, you need to rock all Divines with this one. But if you want to try to run the bombing build solo, which you can, but you got to play it a lot smarter. And you want some impen on your pieces as well. Harmony on all of your jewelry. Now, when it comes to the skills, the skill bar is going to be a little bit different. So... First, you want Mystic Siphon. This is going to give you uh, increased uh, damage on your front bar. You want to run Stalking Blast Bones, Pulsar, and Force Pulse is what I like to use. And then Inner Light gives us crit on the front bar, but it also it gives us a little bit more damage. And then Dawnbreaker is smiting on the front bar as well. Back bar, instead of Intense Mender, you actually want the other morph of this. I messed up and didn't morph it uh, prior to the video, but you want the one with the 10% damage mitigation, Resistant Flesh, everything else is still the same. Except you won't have Avid Boneyard on your back bar this time. The reason it's on your back bar is because DC is on the back bar. So, same with the combo, right? You'll want to cast Blast Bones. You want Light Attack, DC, Peshant, Colossus. Swap your front bar in Harmony. Is how you want to line up the combo. I know it's easier said than done. The bar is going to get a little wacky, especially with the lag. But with a little bit of practice, you guys will get this nailed. No problem. Now, when it comes to the champion points, the blue tree is going to remain exactly the same. We come over to the red tree i would elect putting some points into fortified or balanced vitality so if you're running in a group you're probably gonna have a purge of some sort so you can probably drop pain's refuge as well as relentlessness and toss these cp into a fortified and balanced vitality to get your resistances um, up a little bit on the back bar they're not too bad right but um the only thing that's really going to kill you is like another bomb crow or if you're in if you have a dedicated healer you should be you know no problem but it's nice having some tank ability as much as possible so that's been the two builds guys i really really hope you enjoy trekking kids and cereal this works very well in bgs as well if you want to run this in bgs i would suggest running a little bit more recovery on your jewelry instead of spell damage um, substitute on your jewelry and not your mundus because your mundus is what's going to make your harmonies do a lot of damage and again guys if you have access to the citric order skill line please put that on your bar somewhere to give you minor force if you do not have access to it like myself put on trap beast toss that guy down you'll get minor force that way as well so this has been the updated macro 1vx and group play pvp rule guys for the deadlands dlc if you like the content please like and sub the best way to do so is with the like and sub but go one step further guys i do have youtube memberships as well as a patreon details all that is down in the description if you want to further help support the channel so guys thank you all for watching and have a great rest of your evening peace